And I can gladly tell you the budget framework paper was delivered to us and it's ready. And I'm happy that the undertaking Minister of Finance did has been fulfilled. We'll wait for them to lay it on table. And as we embark on the budgeting process, I want to notify the duty bearers to ensure timely compliance with the milestones of the budget. The earlier we prepare the budget, the better for us. And I wish to guide as follows, that the sectoral committees will have to report to the budget committee on the national budget framework paper by 15th of January. Much as the Public Finance Management Act says by first, so we should be able to report early enough for us to be able to scrutinize and do the, a good job. The budget committee will have to report to the House on the national budget framework paper by 25th January, 2024. I hope you're taking a note. The ministerial policy statement will have to be tabled in the House by 10th of March. Then the alternative policy statement will have to be tabled by leader of opposition and his shadow by 20th of March, 2024. The proposed annual budget for the financial year 2024-2025 will have to be tabled in the House by 25th of March, 2024. The sectoral committees will report on the ministerial policy statement by 15th of April, 2024. The tax bills, this is where we always have problems. We should be able to process tax bills all enough so that we know where we are getting money from. This business of processing tax bills on the last day together with the appropriation bill is not good. We should be able to process the tax bill by 1st May 2024. Honorable Musasese. Honorable members, following my earlier communication on the WIPs, I hereby remind you to expedite on designation of members to various standing committees and that is pursuant to Rule 158.1 of the Rules of Procedure. And failure to, and we shall be designating on the first sitting of next year, 2024. And failure to bring them will be presumed that you're comfortable with the leadership that you have, with the members who you have. So we need a designation, and um, the whip should dis dis should designate, and then the whip of independence too should also designate the independence, and um, we do it in the house, and that will be the first sitting of the next fi next financial year. I mean next next year, twenty twenty four. Honorable members, we are going for festival season. I'm aware that so many Ugandans are going to travel up country. And I'm also happy to see General here. Because so many members, so many people, so many Ugandans will travel up country. The buses, the, the Bianimas of today are going to increase on the tax, on, on the, on the fairs, they are going to do. They are going to be so fast on the roads. They are going to cause accidents. I, I really want to ask you to issue a statement. Issue a statement on the fairs that people should pay. The economy is not good. People don't have money. 
Mm -hmm. What is the difference between traveling now and traveling on Christmas season? If you get a bus that is hiking the prices, stop that bus from moving. Mm -hmm. Until after Christmas, then they can move. So let's be fair to our people. Let's not let them not make a fortune out of nothing because they are really making our people to be disadvantaged. And as we mark the end of the year, as I reminded you the other day, we have an end of year celebration on 21st. The speaker is inviting you for a Christmas. I am inviting you for a Christmas end of year party on Trent first. And I want to warn you members on the speed. Please don't overspeed. If you want to reach early, leave early. Don't overspeed because speed kills. I want to urge the public out there, much as you want to rush to the villages, to town, to wherever. Don't overspeed. Speed kills. We need your life. Honorable members, there was an allegation which didn't go well with some of us. And as the leader of this house, the allegations that are not substantiated are not good. It came to my attention that some individuals or group of members went maligning in this house that uh, we either gave a hundred million or we are about to give whichever as a bribe i am asking bribing you for what what are you bribing you for i want to uh, i want to request you people before you come up with such an allegation you must be able to substantiate you cannot just go, because this is the forum where you should come and talk. You go to the public, you go to the media and start talking all of that. If you're covering your dirt on homosexuality, you're getting money on homosexuality, and you're covering your dirt, don't use this house to cover it. Don't use parliament to cover your dirt. Eat your money of, of, of bum shafters, all those ones. You cannot come and say that we are bribing. Bribing you for what? For us, we are here to do work. We are people-centered parliament. We are here working for our people. And I want to confirm from the chairman budget, in the money that you allocate, we supplied, was there a parliamentary commission? Did we have parliamentary commission on that budget? On that supplementary? Yeah, thank you, right honorable speaker and honorable members. I also had, I saw it on TV, those allegations made, and some people have also been calling me about it. But right on, I will speak, and on our members, with me here, I have a schedule, a supplementary schedule, one for financial year 2023-24, which was laid to this house by Minister of Finance, a copy sees. I Does have, it have parliamentary commission? Madam Speaker and Honourable Members, we don't have parliamentary commission in this schedule. Maybe just for information, all the money that comes to members of parliament comes through parliamentary commission. Vote zero, vote one zero four. That's parliamentary commission. We don't have it here. I have ministers uh, talking notes. Minister of Finance is here. You can confirm. We have a report which we discuss and approved with the schedule. We don't have that item. So as I talk now, 
think a person who said it should come clear and tell us exactly where the money was. Because uh, really it is people are calling, some of my people are calling me, say, oh, no, when are you coming? Please, fact 10 is something for us for Christmas. Honorable members. So we don't have that item here. Maybe a person who has said it can come out clearly to indicate where the money is. But there is no money for parliamentary commission. Honorable members, our worker is for the national service. And we are paid for what we do. We will not, we are not bribed in any way. And we are not, as a House of Parliament, going to be diverted from the homosexuality that you're talking about into bribes. They are trying to cover their homosexuality, saying that Parliament is being bribed. We are not bribed. Eat your money of homosexuality, sell your country, and keep quiet on your own. Yes, uh, Yes, uh, Eddie. Right, Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. Right, Honorable Speaker, thank you for your, comment, your opening remarks. First, uh, I want to thank you that you have reminded the Minister of Works about speed, but uh, you forgot to remind him about the potholes because they also caused accident. And the Chisoro airstrip has potholes and flying stones, and the Minister cannot even fly there. On the issue of uh, the 100 million, honorable members, we have a spokesperson of the House who is the speaker. Then the institutional parliament has a spokesperson. Should we listen to the Rugambo by everybody? Will every member of parliament talking outside his Rugambo be allowed? And if it comes to the public, isn't it appropriate that he is put to order in the house to explain the source? Because whatever we discussed, there was no question of 100, members of, 100 million for each member of parliament. So it would be better if it pleases you, right honorable speaker, that the information which is attributed to one of the members of parliament be invited to the house and substantiates on the information. I thank you. Honorable members, honorable members, you know, if we are allowed to be diverted by the gay movement, if we are allowed to be diverted by the gay movement who are receiving their foreign support to erode our culture, our values, and we will continue debating on, on the gays every day over that 100 million. For us, let's work. We put evidence on the table that we did not get the money and it is a shame, shame upon the person who is moving around. And I know maybe it is because of change of leadership. Now people are trying to buy it to be leaders. The panic mode is too much. Uh, Nathan, Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. It's very unfortunate at my age, it's not usual to talk about any political leader because most of them are young. It's very unfortunate to find that a member of parliament does not know the decorum of parliament. That's why we have dress code. That's how we must talk in a particular manner for a member of parliament to go outside this house and talk something that is not existing at all. One time in 1998, a member of parliament, a minister, made an allegation to some one of the members. He was suspended. And there was the bar, we put a bar there. You go apologize. That's what is coming to. Because for somebody to talk of the money, money is really, that's not, you're not supposed to be a member of parliament, not even a, a political head. Because I would imagine that we are really, he must be above the bar, like that gentleman I really respect, Honorable Mpuga. I will continue holding you high. 
Thank you. But others, I feel that we should definitely humble ourselves. Let's talk with evidence. But you can't talk about even a colleague. We have a case in parliament here where somebody talked about a colleague outside here. It's a case. We are supposed to treat other, treat other people the way you want to be treated so that you can be honorable members. Two, Madam Speaker, the issue the minister was here, Minister of Works is here. We went to Katonga with the Deputy Speaker. We were told that the road would be opened before the end of November. Currently, the people are suffering. We are going up to Zimbabwe. I don't know when Honorable Minister General Katumba will open that road. I saw it completed. So, three, the bus fares. Bus fares increase because when you take people to Mbaro or Mbarara, you come empty. So we must also put something there to compensate. I can tell you, when I take a bus and take people to the up country, they come empty. You know, you know, some some people so, here are conflicted. When you get in Nathan, get Felix, they are all conflicted. But let's not make a fortune out of our people. These people don't have money. And they are going home because they, they really have to go. Not because they have the money to waste. So we should be considerate enough not to overcharge. Can I hear from the minister? Uh, thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I uh, want to respond to Honorable Nathan. Uh, Katonga will be opened on Friday at 8 a.m. Uh, I hope you'll be there. I hope you'll be there to witness the, the occasion. Right Honorable Speaker, on the issue of the fares for buses and taxis, I'm going to have an engagement with the leadership. We have They have an association where we normally do engage when these festive seasons are coming to address the issues of fares, overloading, and also speed. So we are going to engage uh, before uh, the, the close of the... Thank you. Honorable members, we will wait for your communication. I'm happy the other time you sent a communique saying that the road should not be worked on because it would be a waste of money. So we want to see your communication in regard to the transport fare, the speeding uh, buses, and the action that you take on those who go against your, your communication. I want to, therefore to, to urge the public to you know the rumors of the honorable members and treat it with the contempt it deserves. When some of these people don't have what to say, they're going to say nothing and do nothing. Next item. Next item. Item three. Honorable members, let's finish. I want to invite you to members' lunch this evening. I want a surprise today for you. As we go for Christmas. Yes. Uh, Item. Uh, right honorable speaker, in the same vein, I have pain. There are also allegations in the media that some of the MPs in the opposition ate cooperatives money. Through your office, right honorable speaker, we have had a lot of calls from the public that you are in the opposition. Did you eat cooperatives money? Through your office, right honorable speaker, we want to know the names of people in the opposition, especially at cooperatives money. I submit. Honorable members, honorable members, the report on cooperatives. Honorable members, listen. The report on cooperatives was uploaded. I told you to internalize, read it, and understand. If you see your name there, take yourself to police. The report was forwarded to CID, IGG, 
and DPP. It is not just a matter of saying opposition, some opposition members were there. So should we talk about rice now? Next item. Item three, laying of papers, the national budget framework paper for the financial years 2024-25 to 2028-29. Honorable members, section 9.5 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015 and rule 1441 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament requires the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development to table the national budget framework paper by 31st of December of the year, preceding to the financial year in which the national budget framework paper relates to. However, because we are going for a Christmas festival, we will ask Minister of Finance to table the budget framework paper early now for us to be able to, to take off time and study the budget framework paper. It goes to the committees for us to be able to internalize it and scrutinize. And now I invite the minister to, to lay the national budget framework paper. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, in compliance with one, with the Article 1551 of the Constitution and Section 9, 3, and 5 of the Public Finance Management Act and Section 30 of the National Climate Change Act of 2021, and Rule 1441 and 2 of our Rules of Procedure, I beg to lay on the table the National Budget Framework Paper for financial year 2024-2025, financial year 2028-2029. I beg to lay. Please lay. Madam Speaker, Pursuant to Rule 144 of our Rules of Procedure, I beg to lay on table the Certificate of Gender and Equity Compliance of the National Budget Framework Paper 2024-2025 to 2028-2029. I beg to lay. Yes, do. I see Christine is very excited. Yeah, she was waiting for me, <laughs> but this time I am well prepared for her. <laughs> Madam Speaker, in that regard, pursuant to Section 30 of the National Climate Change Act 2021, I beg to lay on the table the Certificate of Climate Change Responsiveness to the National budget framework paper for financial year 2024-2025. Thank I you, to Ms. Lay. Madam Speaker, with... There's a procedure matter. Madam Speaker, Rule 32 requires uh, the documents to be uploaded, but we don't have copies on the, on the iPad. Pardon? Rule 32 requires that uh, we have these documents, copies of the documents he, he's laying, but we, they are not uploaded yet. The, the document is very big. It's being uploaded and it will take some time. You will have time with all of them because you're going to scrutinize all of them, committee by committee. Hmm. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I wish in brief to inform the House and the country what I have laid is all about. Madam Speaker, 
the budget framework paper for financial year 2024-25 covers the following. One, state of the economy. On the state of the economy, we wish to inform the House that Uganda's economy grew to 184.89 trillion, approximately 49.5 billion dollars, up from 162.75 trillion, which is equivalent to 45.6 billion, registered in financial year 21-22. In real terms, the economy grew by 5.2%, in financial year 2022-23, compared to 4.6% registered in financial year 2021-22. The economy is projected to grow by 6% by end of financial year 2023-24, 6.5% in financial year 24-25, and at least 7% over the medium term. Over the past 12 months, the annual headline inflation slowed down from a peak of 10.7% in October 2022 to 2.6% in November 2023. Inflation is expected to remain within the policy target of 5% over the medium term, supported by cross coordination between monetary management and fiscal policy. Madam Speaker, the theme of the budget for financial year 2024-25 remains same as financial year 2022-23, which is full monetization of the Uganda's economy through commercial agriculture, industrialization, expanding and broadening services, digital transformation and market access. Madam Speaker, on the imports, on the merchandise side, the merchandise exports increased significantly, growing by 54.9% from US dollars 4.194 billion in October 2022 to US dollars 6.498 billion in October 2023 largely driven by gold, coffee, may and maize exports. On the import side, the imports grew by 26.2%, much slower than the growth in the exports resulting in the narrowing of the trade deficit by 11.2% in the same period. Imports increased to US dollars 9.356 billion, in the 12 months to October 2023, compared to US dollars 7.413 billion a year ago. The increase in imports is largely in the oil and gas sector, mineral exploration, and vehicles and accessories. Our priority areas for the next financial year's budget for 24-25 are the following. Investing in the people of Uganda, peace and security, roads, electricity generation and transmission lines, prioritizing money earning investments and effective management of our natural, of our natural disasters. And we have done this with the guidance of the President of the Republic of Uganda. Right Honorable Speaker, we are looking forward to growing our economy tenfold in 15 years. This means that we are working towards moving our economy from 49.5 billion US dollars to 500 billion US dollars in 15 years. And we shall do so by focusing on the following strategic areas. One, tourism development. Two, agro-industrial development. Three, mineral-based industrial development. Four, oil and gas development. 
including petrochemical industries and five, knowledge economy. Madam Speaker, on the resource envelope, the total funding for financial year 2024-2025 is projected to be 52 trillion 722 billion 682 million 928,748 shillings. The details are in the document which I have laid in the big document. The financing strategy for the budget, right honorable speaker, will, will be as follows. One, we are looking forward to deepening the fiscal consolidated consolidation agenda through improved revenue collection, continued repurposing of the budget to improve efficiency and effectiveness of the public expenditure, controlled borrowing to reduce debt servicing cost while supporting faster social economic transformation and implement implementation of our public investment financing strategy by exploring alternative and more sustainable sources of financing, including PPPs, private equity funds, capital markets, climate financing, including carbon credit markets, among others. And lastly, improving efficiency in the execution of projects and public investments. With this, Madam Speaker, our prayer is that we request Parliament to consider the, the budget framework paper for financial year 2024-2025 to 2028-2029. I beg to move, right honorable speaker. Thank you so much, honorable minister. Uh, Yes. Thank you, right honorable speaker. And let me also thank the minister for taking us through the budget framework paper. Madam Speaker, the minister is aware that this preparation of this budget framework paper is supposed to be consistent with the development plan, the national development plan, and the charter for fiscal responsibility. And besides laying, by the way, he's required by law to lay two certificates here. He has laid one. This budget framework paper is not only supposed to be gender and equity responsive, but also it is supposed to have a certificate cleared by the Equal Opportunities Commission. Madam Speaker, I'm seeking clarification from the minister whether he is aware of the 10 programs that could not even pass the test of the Equal Opportunities Commission. And I know the minister is well polished about the law. Section 9, subsection 2 of uh, the Public Finance Management Act gives him a stringent requirement, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The minister laid two documents, two certificates, and the one of um, of gender was is issued by equal opportunities. That is the one you want, and then he has also laid the one of climate change. So he has laid the two documents. Honourable members, pass one to section nine seven of the Public Finance Management Act. Yes. I wish I could first refer. Because I could easily invite the house to reconsider. To, to, to reconsider. Referral. <laughs> thank you, Reverend Speaker. Reverend Speaker, I want to thank the minister for timely bringing this um, BFP. I, I am a bit constrained uh, because uh, in his um, elaborate um referral to the same you know that's why the honorable member was a bit uh dissatisfied that we don't have the document because we could have helped the minister 
to make a robot commentary on his submission. For instance, the means as uh, can, can, can I kindly lend you my certificates and you have a look at them? Thank such you. Such that Bob. when you're speaking, you have them. I will make a reference. Thank yes. you for your um, kindness. Let me speak at the a quick one. The means has complied with the certificate, the environmental compliance certificate, as per section 30 of the uh, Climate Change Act. This is an act um, passed by Parliament 2021, but there are no regulations on the same. I do not know, right now, Speaker, whether we are moving well to extract a commerce certificate in a law that has no regulations since it was passed. I don't know where the Minister of Environment gets the audacity to lay a certificate from a law that is devoid of regulation, the regional speaker. Two, the minister has been a bit elaborate on uh, what they intend to change. Um, what is not spoken about, including uh, matters obtained from the Charter of Fiscal Responsibility, the minister is not clear whether they intend to make some changes on the Charter of Fiscal Responsibility, because if that's the case, should have laid the same here before the BFP as per the law and procedure, right honorable uh, speaker. Will the minister clarify whether he's going to put the cart before the horse or we bear with him to, to, to make these undertakings? Uh, one good thing is the minister is going to appear before all the committees, all the committees, and make elaborate commitment in all the committees, sectoral committees. But uh, let's hear from him. Madam Speaker, I want to thank you for your wise guidance. Indeed, when we appear before various committees, which will consider the budget framework paper, we shall provide all the information pertaining this process of scrutiny, and we shall also welcome issues which will come from members. However, Madam Speaker, I wish to inform the House that the Charter of Fiscal, Res Fiscal Responsibility is a five-year period, and we just approved the one we are using in uh, 2021, which will take us through these five years which we are looking at, and afterwards we shall process another one. Thank you. Yes, uh, love. Thank you, Reverend Speaker. The Minister is right that the Charter was laid at the commencement of this term of Parliament. But I'm also alive the fact that he is communicating change in government tact, revenue mobilization, and the like. It's not a crime in legislation 4 of the PFMA Act. You are allowed to alternate. But I'm saying if you're going to do it, will you inform Parliament that we are at par? It's not a crime for you to, to make changes in the charter. If you're going to make the same, you lay the changes before the House. I'm not saying you're committing a crime. He but can, I heard he you can, so well. You can still bring the changes. Of course, obviously, there will always be changes. So just make a comment. I want him to make an admission there. He's, he's communicating a change so that we are not taken <laughs> by surprise. Some of us are very alert to what you're saying. You know, uh, you need to... We are bound to have changes. There is something I've already noticed. <laughs> I've already noticed I checked an account. And I said, why do we have this figure? <laughs> so, yes, Madam that Speaker, allows you. Madam Speaker, I have worked with the, the, the rope, Honorable Matthias Mpuga, for all my life in this parliament. And uh, we normally see some things the same way, especially in regard to these matters. Madam Speaker, yes, the, on the matters of budgeting and finance, he normally sees what I see. <laughs> Madam 
Speaker, we have just laid the framework. We are going to work with this framework well, up to end of January. Well, any changes Parliament required. will make recommendations. These recommendations, will, some of them will be changes. And when I come back to lay the budget, the estimates, and also the ministerial policy statements, some information will be provided. There will be a call circular too. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. There will be a call circular too. Budget call circular too. On the revenue. Yes, it is true. We are aggressively looking for ways of how to finance our budget using our own resources. And we are currently implementing the our revenue revenue mobilization strategy, domestic revenue mobilization strategy, and there are a number of things we are doing there. And as and when it requires, like when we go to the committees, we will be proposing a number of things for your approval, right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues. And I know Honorable Mpuga's concerns. We also, we shall get there. And when we get there, we are flexible enough to really move together in this. This is not a matter of losing and winning. It's a matter of both winning in order to help us raise money, spend money efficiently and effectively for the good of our people of Uganda. I thank you very thank much. You. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister. And uh, one, I must really appreciate you for bringing the BFP early. Well enough. The burden is now left on the chair, the persons of both the budget committee and the sectoral committees. And pass on to section nine. Uh, uh, Pass one to section nine seven of the Public Finance Management Act 2015 and rule 145, 145 one of the rules of procedure. The National Budget Framework paper is accordingly referred to the Budget Committee for consideration and to the various sectoral committees. The sectoral committees will restrict themselves to the part of the budget framework paper that falls within their jurisdictions. In addition, I wish to guide as follows. The consideration of the national budget framework paper usually coincides with the first four seasons. As such, the chairpersons of various committees should adequately mobilize the members and make sure that this work is done as well as possible. The consideration of the National Budget Framework paper is time bound. And that is as per Rule 145.2 of the Rules of Procedure. And this procedure grants the sectoral committees up to 20th Ju July to report back to the committees but that should be done before. The budget committee has up to 1st February to table a report for consideration of the house. The timelines therefore requires early commencement of consideration of this budget framework paper in the relevant committees. I now instruct the clerk to parliament. I know the tendency of my staff not to allow any staff that works within the committees of the budget, sectoral committees, not to give them leave. They will get leave after the budget has been processed. Proceed on the same. Yeah, thank you. Right In time. addition, I expect the committees to ensure adequate public participation in consideration of the National Budget Framework paper. Members, you need to participate in this because, because this is when you get to know what goes to your district, to your constituency, what goes outside there to the Ugandans. And when we are doing this, we are looking at policies. We are looking at the policies that are 
being handled. You passed the laws in this house. And now here is where you're going to relate the laws that you passed vis-a-vis -vis what is being brought to you. I want to thank you, Finance, on that. Yes, uh, Sironko. Yeah, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I'm standing on a procedural point or guidance. More so that the budget framework paper has been laid and the committees must actively participate. That by the deadline of the January you are setting, committees could have effectively handled the business. But most of the committees, the standing committees have expired. Could that be procedure okay? That at least before you go for the Christmas period, the members could be designated on those standing committees. That they can honorable, honorable, I thought you are in this place other than me. You've been in parliament other than me. This is for sectoral committees. Sectoral committees. I did not mention standing committees anywhere. Next item, yes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Actually, my issue has a lot to do with um, uh, uh, the way our committees are structured. As much as I've not looked at the document, but I believe that government has presented the document in a program-based budget. Uh, process they, they took over. And for us, we are still, our, our committees are still structured on sectors. The last year when we were processing the budget framework paper and actually the budget, there was some bit of disconnect because for them, they are reporting or they are presenting as per the program. And for us, we are actually handling per sector. Somehow you realize that one sector once has money or wants money for a very critical item Yet another sector actually is demanding money that may not be that critical. So in the, in the process, there was some disconnect. Madam Speaker, I'm seeking your guidance. If it's not procedurally right to guide on how best we can handle the budget framework paper now that it's with us. Uh, as we, per the we, 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 have, we have programs. Just, uh, the way you look at it is in programs, but it is cross-cutting. When you look at uh, legal, it looks at justice, it looks at uh, IGG, it looks at parliament, it, it cuts across. So that can be harmonized. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, it is true the preparation for the budget framework paper has been anchored on the 20 programs which we now best our planning on. However, Madam Speaker, we are aware that Parliament still operates in the old style when we were still looking at sectors. And I wish to allay the fears of Honorable Enos that even in these programs, there are votes. There are various votes which we use for a supply and allocation of resources. So when you get to a program, you will get to know which entity lies, belongs to which vote and which entity belongs to which committee. And as a result of that, the committees will be able to pick out what belongs to them. And when we come to consolidation at the budget committee level, we shall now merge, consolidate, and report back to the House as programs. I thank you. Thank you. Next item. Item four. Motion for resolution of Parliament to authorize government to borrow up to United States dollars 295 million from the Islamic Development Bank and United States dollars 30 million from the OPEC Fund for International Development for the upgrading of National Roads Project in Uganda. Honorable members, as we are aware, reliable transport connectivity is a vital 
precondition for economic growth and development. You've just been talking about potholes here. And now we are saying, let's get a loan and work on this road network for us to be able to connect throughout the whole country, for us to improve on our transport infrastructure, to reduce the freight costs, and if pass one to rule 159 of the Constitution, I mean Article 159 of the Constitution, and Section 36 and Section 39 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015, and Rule 1551 of the Rules of Procedure. I now invite the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development to move a motion for a resolution of this house to authorize government to borrow for this purpose. Honorable Minister. I can hear some people with some cabiritis. If you have a cabiriti, take it out. Thank you, right honorable speaker. In compliance, with the laws you have just stated, Article 159 of the Constitution, Section 36 and 39 of the Public Finance Management Act, and Rule 155 of our Rules of Procedure, I beg to move a motion for a resolution of parliament to authorize government to borrow up to US dollars 295 million from the Islamic Development Bank of China and US dollars 30 million from the OPEC Fund for International Development for the upgrading of national roads project in Uganda. I beg to move, right honorable speaker. Is the motion seconded? Seconded by Honorable Baka, Honorable Kasolo, Honorable General Muhosi, by elders, by Honorable Nandutu, by Minister of Works General, by Honorable Magezi, Honorable Daudi, by the whole house who love roads. Yeah. including Honorable Abed. Yeah. There is no Islamic banking of uh, Islamic Bank of China. No. A correction. Yeah. He's making a correction. <laughs> speaker. <laughs> speaker. <laughs> Let the finance minister sit Madam down. Madam Speaker. Honorable <laughs> Minister. He's just making a small correction. I would like to correct my motion. It's my motion. <laughs> I'm the one who corrected <laughs> Madam Speaker, we are borrowing from the Islamic Development Bank. <laughs> the, uh, the issue that of is, China was... Is that Seattle, UK? <laughs> we have one Islamic Development Bank. The issue was uh, a typing error. A typing error. Uh, no, that's okay. The error has been corrected. Would you... Want to tell us the terms of borrowing? Let's first get the terms. I know you want to know the roads. You'll get that from the report. Madam, <laughs> Madam Speaker, I beg your indulgence that I tell you why we are borrowing and the terms. Yes. Uh, Madam Speaker, I would wish to justify the loan as follows. The implementation of the project will contribute directly to the NDP3 key result areas of increasing the stock of transport infrastructure, reducing freight transportation costs, and reducing travel time. The upgrading of the national roads project is part of Uganda's national road network and will involve number one, 
upgrading of Katine Ochiro Road, 70 kilometers, two, construction of Martin Masin Port Bridge, and three, upgrading of Chenjo Jochura, Gizi Guamanja Kahunje, 68 kilometers, and Imparabrizi, 37 kilometers. Madam Speaker, you can uh, notice that Honorable Frank is uh, very happy about this project. Right, Honorable Speaker, the Katine Ochiro Road is currently gravel and does not provide a reliable and efficient or weather link, which reduces the number of people who travel to the project influence areas. The traffic levels on the road cause fast deterioration of the unpaved, unpaved surface, resulting in increased cost of maintaining the road in, in a motorable state. At the Masind Port Bridge, the existing ferry that facilitates crossing the Victoria Nile to connect to Gwenkunya Masind Port section to Kungu Apache section is old with insufficient capacity to carry the ever increasing traffic. The change of Jochura Bgizi, Wamanja Kahunje, and the Mpara Bgizi Road is characterized by surface corrugations, inadequate drainage, and poor alignment, and a total carriage way width that varies between five to six meters. Madam Speaker, the third national development plan identifies access to and efficient transport infrastructure as critical to Uganda's competitiveness and the country's ability to harness its regional and globalization potential. Transport infrastructure is noted as a key component contributing to the NDP3 goal of increased household incomes and the quality of life by linking growth opportunities in the key development sectors of agriculture, tourism, and minerals, which facilitate national and international integration and supports job creation and poverty alleviation. The proposed imp improved road infrastructure is expected to trigger rapid socioeconomic development and transformation of communities living within the project impact zone. The selected roads are prioritized for implementation during the third national development plan under the integrated infrastructure and services program. The proposed date is consistent with the existing national vision, public debt management framework, and the third development plan. The terms and conditions of borrowing are as follows. A loan amount, US dollars 250, 295 million. The loan period is 20 years, including grace period of five years. The effective interest rate is 4.75%. Madam Speaker, we have another component of $30 million and its terms are as follows. Loan period is 20 years, including grace period of five years, and the interest rate is at 2%. Madam Speaker, with this justification, we presented the loan to the committee. The committee looked at it, and uh, with your guidance, the committee can take us into the details of what they saw in our proposal. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chair. Honorable members, that was just to inform the debate. I now I'll invite the chair. But before I invite the chair, I want to interest the minister to the Kampala Jinja Express Highway. The Kampala Jinja Express Highway, that is a very, very critical road. It, it takes you to the borders 
all the other borders. It takes you to Kenya, to South Sudan, to everywhere. And the loan was approved in, in June 2020 to date four years down the road. Nothing has taken place. The disbursement is at 0.1%. How sure are we that this one that we are approving today is going to be utilized? Uh, right, Honorable Speaker. I request that uh, I come on the floor in the, as soon as Parliament resumes and I bring an update report on where we are on the Kampala Jinji Expressway. The demands and the requirements on that project are far much deeper and more complex than the Katino Ochero, which is a, like a straightforward uh, project. So, but I'll bring the details. I, I request that I be allowed to bring more details as soon as Parliament resumes. Honorable Minister, that's a priority road. If you were to talk about priorities, in terms of roads. That's a priority road. Much of break down for eternal speed. We need a report on that road. And uh, we'll even stop approving monies for roads before you start working on that road. Yes, uh, Chair. Can you just give us a brief of your report? Because we still have the same kind of report on the next loan. Uh, much obliged, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, but first, please allow me to uh, thank my committee because they had to work around the clock and through you if they can stand up for, for recognition. Through you, Right Honorable Speaker. So, Right Honorable Speaker, Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. You you have only four members. Right, right. Right Honorable Speaker, of course, of course, Parliament also has over 500 <laughs> members, but uh, you can see those are, but they sign. And that's why the report finds this way uh, to meet your expectations. Anyway, committee, thank you so much for working very hard. But even when you do approvals of these loans, make a follow-up of the previous approvals. Don't just approve anyhow. Much obliged, Honorable Speaker. And we have re re pending reports for performance of loans. When the time allows, we shall also present them. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, allow me lay on table minutes of the meetings of the Committee on National Economy with the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development on the proposal by government to borrow up to US dollars 295 million from the Islamic Development Bank and US dollars 30 million from the OPEC Fund for International Development for the upgrading of national roads project in Uganda held on 29th November 2023. Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay. Please lay. Honorable Speaker, also, I know it's uh, uploaded, but for purposes of uh, procedure, allow me to lay on the table the report of the committee. Let's do. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, the, the minister highlighted the, uh, the components, project components, and also laid the justification for the loans. Uh, but let me mention this on page 12, the project financing. So I would direct you to page 12. The total project cost is estimated at US dollars, 347 uh, million. Uh, the Islamic Bank will finance US dollars, 295 million, through a combination of US dollars, 13 million, and US dollars, 282 million installment sales in step one and two, respectively. The PEC fund is expected to offer $30 million uh, dollars through a parallel financing, as, and is, this will be dedicated to Katine Ochero section. The government of Uganda 
is expected to provide uh, US dollars 22 million in land acquisition for that counterpart funding. Uh, right honorable speaker, uh, I request to guide the committee, I mean the, the members to page 17, where we have item three, which is economic returns on the project. The project present positive net present value, averaging US dollars 41.65 million with economic rates of return for upgrading of Catino Ochero Road, construction of Masindi Port Bridge, and upgrading of Chihula, Buizi, Ramwanja, Chihunge at 17.4% and 15.7% in addition 20.8% respectively. Since the internal rate of return is higher than Uganda's economic opportunity uh, cost of capital at 11%, it's an indication that the project is economically viable and impactful to the whole country with both indirect and direct benefits. Uh, allow me to guide you to page 19. According to the Minister of Works and Transport, the funding requirements for the proposed interventions in the country, as far as uh, uh, status of roads is concerned, amounts to 580 billion shillings. That's the bad roads. This requirement is categorized in the following entities as follows. National Road Network, 64 billion. DUCA, uh, 429.8 billion. Minister of Works, in terms of emergency response items for culverts, gabions, fire bridges, at 50.7 billion and cases road network at 35 billion. Uh, that's an observation. The committee recommends that the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development should, as a matter of urgency, find money to cater for emergency repairs of the roads in the country. 8.2 Grace period of the financing. The committee observed that the Islamic Development Bank draft installment sale financing framework agreement defines the payment period as being the period of 15 years, starting from the end of the gestation period, provided the period from the first disbursement date up to the last payment date shall not exceed 20 years. The gestation period provided for under Article 2 of the framework agreement is five years from the first disbursement date. The committee noted that the brief to Parliament by the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development indicated a grace period of four years, contrary to the provision in the financing agreement. The committee recommends that the grace period be maintained as five years, similar to the gestation period provided for under Article 2 of the draft installment self financing framework agreement. This should be maintained in the final financing agreement. 8.2, risk premium of the financing agreement. The committee observed that the draft installment sale financing framework agreement provides for risk premium as a compensation for market risk assumed by the Islamic Government Bank in refinancing prevailing at the time of disbursement. Such prevailing spread would be fixed for the relevant disbursement to be calculated for the remaining financing uh, tenure. The committee also noted that the risk premium was subject to semi-annual update by the bank to reflect changes the market condition. The committee observed that whereas the Minister of Finance's brief to Parliament indicated a risk premium being 0.5%, the draft installment self-financing framework agreement provided for the prevailing risk premium to be 0.7%. Uh, the committee notes that higher risk premium reduces the grant element of the financing from the Islamic Government Bank and also increases the debt servicing cost of this facility. Additionally, up, updates made to the risk premium complicate the computation of the debt servicing costs for the particular period, including annual projections. The committee recommends that the Minister of Works renegotiate the risk premium to a lower rate and also have it fixed for the entire debt servicing period, since the bank will incorporate the secured overnight financing rate in computing the payment installments. Uh, and this can serve as a parameter to reflect changes in the market condition 
as its variation is caused by the same. 8.3 upgrading Chenjojo, Kihula Wizi, Ramwanja, Chihunge, uh, 68 kilometers, and Impala Wizi, uh, 37 kilometers. The committee noted that a project appraisal document and the minister's brief indicate that the selected roads for upgrading under this financing proposal have, have prioritized for implement have been prioritized for implementation during the third national development plan. The committee further noted that the upgrading of Chenjojo, Kihula, Bwezi, Ramwanja, Kahunge, 68 kilometers, and Impala, Bwezi, 37 kilometers, were not part of NDP3 projects under the Integrated Transport Infrastructure Services. The committee was informed that the road was actually part of NDP3 project, but was termed under Rimi, Dura, Kamwenge Road. The committee therefore recommends that the project name contained in NDP3 be maintained for consistency with NDP3. The committee recomm also recommends going that going forward, uh, all MDS should adhere to the provisions of NDP3 for uh, to avoid uh, distortions. So the, the road is the same, but the naming uh, doesn't uh, tally with the, what is in NDP3. 8.4 land acquisition and compensation of projects affected persons. In line with project costing and provisions in the financing agreement, the committee notes that the government of Uganda is expected to contribute US dollars $22 million towards land acquisition. In addition, government of Uganda is expected to cater for all VAT-related costs that will arise during project implementation. The committee observed that a number of projects being implemented by Uganda National Authority have experienced implementation delays because inadequate resources are allocated to land acquisition and composition of projects affected persons. Acquisition of land and right of way uh, in the project uh, sites is vital before onboarding of constructors by UNRWA to ensure timely execution and completion of projects. The committee recommends that MDS should always undertake project designs prior to sourcing for money in order to minimize project delays and accrual of sufficient resources uh, be allocated, uh, allotted to land acquisition and composition of project affected persons for this project. Additionally, adequate funds be provided to cater for land acquisition needs for all ongoing roads to ensure them be to ensure that they are fast tracked and achieve their intended uh, objectives. 8.5, design and scope changes. The committee observed that some externally financed projects such as, such as Busega and PG Expressway have to, have, have, to un, have to undergo design changes and rescoping of works. This is effect. This in effect affects progress of works due to delayed finalization of the designs and have most times resulted into increased variation costs. The committee noted that the design changes are occasioned by the need to improve road designs minimize land acquisition costs, incorporate environmental and social safeguards, among others, so as to optimize project outcomes. The committee was informed that UNRWA has built and continues to build capacity in network planning, designs, and engineering, and has since undertaken numerous designs in-house. The committee recommends that project design stage be accorded thorough scrutiny, and this process be concluded before any funding is sourced. This will minimize project delays, accrual of commitment fees, needless uh, and ex unexpected cost overruns. What honorable speaker, uh, having listened to, to that and uh, knowing the need for these roads and aware that he, Uganda loses over 428 billion annually due to bad roads. The committee recommends that the proposal by government, uh, the proposal by government to borrow up to US dollars to 95 million from the Islamic Development Bank and United States dollars 30 million from the OPEC Fund for International Development for the upgrading of national roads project in Uganda be approved subject to those recommendations. I beg to report. Thank you so much. On top of Uganda losing money on, on bad roads, she also loses people daily. 
so many people. And that is what is most important. And that's what we should consider. And as we approve these loans, general, we expect these loans to be worked on. Let's not just approve and remain here. They should be worked on and completed. And good contractors, let's not give the contractors that because I know so and so. We need to have good contractors who will do a good job on these roads. Don't work on the road for one year. The next year, the road is in bad shape. You again come here asking for loans, taxpayers' money. There is a motion. You want to debate on uh, whether the road should be worked on or not? <laughs> now, for instance, in Kahunge, I even promised when I went there. <laughs> eh? Honorable members, even the next loan is on the same. It is on the roads. It's about people's lives. Motion. There's a motion. Right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. This report is very clear. So uh, I move a motion that the, the report be adopted and the question be put and move to another item. Seconded. Seconded by Ochero, by Kahunge, by... <laughs> Honorable Members, I now put a question that the motion for a resolution of Parliament to authorize government to borrow up to USD 295 million from the Islamic Development Bank. Islamic Development Bank and USD 30 million from OPEC Fund for international development for upgrading of the National Road Project in Uganda be adopted by this house, those in favor send the control name. There is have it. I instruct the clerk to extract a resolution and submit it immediately for immediate action. Next item. Item five. Motion yes, for the procedural reso matter. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And I want to thank the House for approving the loan. Uh, Madam Speaker, you had talked about the, the Ginger Express. I rise here. I thought raise, I ruled. Yes, the Ginger Express. I thought I ruled on Ginger Express. Yes, you ruled. But uh, I, I rise here on the procedural matter that, Madam Speaker, when you look at the road from Malaba, the road which is actually the main artery that brings the revenue that we are talking about in this house. And the congestion that is unprecedented in Malaba, the congestion where vehicles take now, as much as clearing moves faster, but the jam alone in Malaba, if you are now to move to Malaba, and you're about two kilometers to Malawi. You can take four hours to access the border. The jam. So, Madam Speaker, as uh, we, have, we have proved this loan that now has gone, wouldn't it be procedurally right that government looks at fast tracking how we can expand the road accessing Malaba, but also do a bypass, since Malaba is the main border, a bypass that should separate the northern corridor traffic from the southern corridor traffic. That is creating a bypass through Kwapa and joining the Mbale Road towards Zimbale. Because traffic to northern Uganda is increasing, traffic to the oil, the, the, the oil uh, exploration areas is increasing. Would it be procedurally right that government fast tracks on seeing how we can expand those roads to enable us to generate even more revenue? Uh, Thank uh, you. Honorable Bangura, do you know General Katumba? Have you ever known him? I'm just asking. Thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, General is known to me and is responsible for the docket. 
But uh, now that you know him, kindly walk to his office and give him the information because that is a very crucial matter that does not need to wait for this house. Thank okay. you very much, Madam Speaker. Most of like, thank but, you. But he has also heard. Thank you. General, have you heard what we are talking about the road? We need that road to be worked on, and you've heard what he's saying. Right, Honorable Speaker, it's not the first time Honorable Bangura and me have interacted on that matter, and I can assure him that uh, already we have uh, in the pro we are in the process of uh, creating lanes uh, from Malaba to Tororo, and then also address the bypass, which would throw the the traffic ahead of Tororo town. Thank you. Next item. Item five. Motion for resolution of parliament to authorize government to prefinance the reconstruction of Masaka Mutukula Road, 89.5 kilometers. And rehabilitation of Nyendo Villa Maria, 11 kilometers. Upgrading of 3.5 kilometer access road to the Uganda People's Defense Forces barracks in Masaka. 3.5 kilometer access road to Masaka Industrial Park and an additional scope of 28.5 kilometers for Kikagati Kafunzo Road at a total cost of Uganda shillings 691,680,000,000. Clark, you need to upload all these reports. Can we just hear the terms of borrowing? Now that everybody is clapping on this, and uh, for for colleagues for a long time, people have been raising issues on this road, and you can see it from the excitement. And because everybody is excited, we are going to go as per the same Article One Fifty Nine of the Constitution, the Public Finance Management Act Thirty Six Thirty Nine, and then the Rules of Procedure for this house to authorize the borrowing for the side roads. Can we hear from the minister, move a motion? We cannot put a question before we move a motion. Some of you have just come today. <laughs> move a motion. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, pursuant to Article 159 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda and Section 36 and 39 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015 and Rule 155 of our Rules of Procedure, I beg to move a motion for a resolution of parliament to authorize government to prefinance the, the reconstruction of Masaka Mutukura Road, 89.5 kilometers, and rehabilitation of Nyandovira Maria Road, 11 kilometers, upgrading of 3.5 kilometer access road to Uganda People's Defense Forces Barracks in Masaka and 3.5 kilometer access road to Masaka Industrial Park and do an additional scope of 28.5 kilometers for Chikagat Kafunzo Road at a total cost of Uganda shillings 691 billion 680 million. Yes, Uganda shillings. I beg to move, right, Honorable Speaker. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister. Is that seconded? Seconded by. I want to see a leader of opposition.
seconded by everybody, including a leader of opposition. I bet it was like, eh. Even Bashir, honorable members, you've heard. Can I now hear from the chair? Before the chair, Madam Speaker, we have to justify and inform the country about what we are doing, what we are going to do. I thought you were okay, so just fine. No. <laughs> okay, just fine. Give us the terms and give us your request. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, Masaka Mutukura Road is a critical link to the port of Dar es Salaam, and the road will facilitate the construction of the East African crude oil pipeline ECOP. Therefore, it is important that its reconstruction is, is prioritized and undertaken before any further deterioration on the road happens. The reconstruction of the road cannot be financed within the current 2023-2024 budget and financial year 2024-2025 budget ceiling for, for UNRWA since it is overcommitted during the mentioned two fiscal years with ongoing road projects and those already considered to commence in 2023-2024 financial year. The government therefore engaged a contractor to pre-finance the reconstruction of the road starting with financial year 2023-2024 on the understanding that the government shall re refund the contractor in the third e financial year, that is 2025-2026, and fourth year, which is 2026-2027, after the start of the construction works and payments start in the third year after realization of some fiscal space to fund the project. Madam Speaker, China Ching International Construction Company, commonly known as Chico Uganda Limited, has expressed interest in prefinancing this road, starting with financial year 2023-24, on the understanding that the, that the prerequisite that the requisite costs of the civil works undertaken will be reimbursed over a period of two years, starting financial year 2025-2026. Prefinancing amounts committing government, which requires government to seek authority of parliament in line with section 23 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015 as amended. Madam Speaker, the prefinancing will be done by the contractor for the first two years, that is 24 months of the project implementation, at zero interest rate, and the payment by government will have to be done within the last two years of the project implementation, starting in the third year, which is 2025-2026. In other words, briefly, these are the terms. No interest rate, but the contractor will do the work and be paid at a profit. The funds do not have interest rate, therefore they are cost-free, but the benefit to the contractor is embedded in the margin or profit which he will get as a result of doing this work. I beg to submit to right honorable speaker. Thank you so much. And as much as you, there's a benefit in that, and we are all excited about uh, tamak in that side. We need equity in distribution of tamak. When you look at, look at some areas, there's no tamak. We need equity. And much as you've said, it is a very important road. Uh, Jinja, Kampala Jinja, Malaba, 
is equally very important. So you need to make sure that you work on that road. When you look at the road, when you look at the roads, Karuma Pakwach, Nebi Arua, Gulu Achak Nimule are equally very important. When you bring a road on the other side, you should also be able to bring on the other side for you to be able to, to, to balance the equation. Let's balance the boat so that we are able to have, yes. Because I am not saying we are not working on the road. Let's work on the road. It is it's overdue, but you need to balance. Okay? Balance. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I know the Minister of Works will elaborate on this, but for us at Finance, what guides us is the National Development Plan. All these new projects we are doing, except for Masaka Mutukura, which is in a dire need. Does the, does, the, does new... the National Government uh, Development Plan have equity in it? Yes, Madam Speaker. The National Development Plan talks about, emphasizes more on balanced and regional development. Yes, and that's what we are what saying. We, this is our guiding tool. Yeah, that is but what I we... know that the Minister of Works, who is responsible for the sector, can really add. But for us at Finance, our tool which guides what we do is the National Development At Plan. Finance, you should be able to balance and say, this time we have funded this region. Next time we should be able to fund this region. Another time we should be able to fund another region. Huh? We are representatives of all the regions in this country. So people will look at us like we don't mind about them. Can we first hear from the chair? You want to debate what you've not heard? Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. And uh... In the same spirit, allow me lay on table minutes of the committee in the consideration of um, Tukula Masaka Road. I, I, uh, I beg to lay. Please lay. Uh, for purposes of record, let me also lay on table uh, the report of the committee. Madam Speaker, having listened to all those submissions, uh, let me uh, proceed to observations and recommendations, but summarize. And uh, in particular, uh, the committee uh, looked at the unit cost of the road, and uh, which was uh, on the higher side, and made the following recommendations. The committee recommends that given the high cost, a means of works and UNRWA should ensure that the contractor delivers the best quality bridges and roads in order to achieve value for money. In addition, yes, please. In addition, the committee recommends that UNRWA should increase the stations, the, uh, the places of convenience on the road from, from, from one to two, since this is in, in an international highway. So that's within that cost. Further, given the unit cost of the project, the 400 meters from the Gaya PTC be upgraded and street lighting should be included in the following urban areas. Masaka urban stretch to be increased to 10 kilometers, that's the street lighting. Bukunda urban stretch, 1.5. Villa Maria to Nyendo Road, 11 kilometers. Masaka Industrial Park, which is 3.5 kilometers. And Chitwe Town on Chikagati, Kafunjo Road. Madam Speaker, that's within, we are recommending that's within the same cost. Uh, then uh, the other recommendation, uh, Madam Speaker, is on the slow disbursement in external finance projects, but this is specific to, you know, we are picking out Ginger Express Highway that we mentioned earlier. I request that I read this. The Kampala Ginger Express Highway was at procurement stage seven years after the project started and by June 2022 
they had attracted commission fees amounting to US dollars 3 billion according to Dr. General's report for financial in June 2022 and between July and December 2022. Uh, Uganda shillings 1.1 billion was spent on commission fees. The committee was informed that the delay in the implementation is partly attributed to cabinet and parliament's own approval conditions that delayed the project by 18 months, as well as delayed procurement of the project implementation unit due to lack of readily available skills in the region. The committee recommends that UNRWA should ensure the Stanley Finance Projects only secured. We, we re reiterate the area. But further, for government of Uganda projects, UNRWA should ensure that time, timely implementation to create the much needed fiscal space uh, that shall be required in two years' time. Now that this one has to be cleared within uh, two years after implementation. Um, the Whistleblowers Act uh, 2010 should be uh, amended, provide for timeliness of procurement related complaints as it is in the PPD Act. We mentioned earlier the issue of uh, inadequate counterpart funding. Uh, the committee observed that the budget for land acquisition under that project, this project, is not enough. Some projects had to stall. As contractors had to wait for when the sections of the road will be acquired so as to access full possession of the site. For instance, civil works for Chigumba, Bulima, under the Chigumba Masindo in Makaboya Road project commenced works a year after contract signature due to lack of adequate right of way, which was attributed to inadequate funding for land acquisition. The committee recommends that the budget for land acquisition under UNRWA should be enhanced to ensure smooth implementation of various projects with government commitments. In addition, UNRWA should prioritize counterpart funding for this project under the land acquisition project to ensure its timely implementation, leaving no room uh, for blame on government for any delays. 10.5. Uh, there is a currency breakdown. The committee recommends uh, that UNRWA should consider renegotiating for better currency breakdown in the vice because, Madam Speaker, the breakdown was 80% in US dollars and 20% Uganda shillings. And the committee uh, recommends, uh, uh, the committee uh, recommends, therefore, rec uh, consider negotiating for better currency breakdown in the various contracts so as to minimize on the foreign exchange risk associated with foreign currency to prefibre a ratio of 50 uh, to 50. Conclusion, the committee recommends that the proposal to prefinance the, cons the cons reconstruction of Masaka Mutukura Road 89.5 kilometers and rehabilitation of Nyendo Villa Maria 11 kilometers, upgrading of 3.5 kilometers access road to Uganda People's Defense Forces Barracks in Masaka 3.5 kilometers access road to Masaka Industrial Park, and an additional scope of 28.5 kilometers for Chikagati Kafunjo Road at a total cost of U Uganda shillings, uh, 691 uh, billion, 680 million, be approved subject to the observations and recommendations herein. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, I beg to lay, or oh, I beg to move. Thank you. Thank you so much. Chair for the report, brief report. Nyendo, you wanted to say something? Nyendo, there's a motion, Nyendo. <laughs> so, right, Honorable Speaker, I want to thank the Chair Pass for the report and the attendant observations. I have two remarks, right, Honorable Speaker. One, is that the House should recognize that um, for the first time, the government is bringing a pre-finance project for approval. Two years ago, I raised the red flag over the avalanche of projects offered on yellow papers, committing government without scrutiny of parliament. There was denial from the Attorney General now he has walked backwards. The House is at liberty for, to serve up proudly for insisting that it was illegal and irregular and out of space. So 
that was the way to go from the word go right on the speaker. I am glad that um, the government has woken up and uh, corrected the illegality that was being visited on the taxpayer. Secondly, um, to congratulate the Minister for Works for finally working on uh, the Matukura Road. It was a monument of shame uh, to the nature of neglect we can visit on to ourselves on such an international highway that brings in a lot of revenue into the country. So I hope it will change not only the face. You don't know, speaker, you drive through Tanzania and enter Uganda, and then you realize that it's a whole new, you know, space on earth. You know, it was a huge shame on us. I hope it will lift our image and also enhance the revenue inflow into the country. Finally, I concur with you, original speaker, that finance and works need to harmonize balancing. While we are going to work with that international highway, the hinterland feeding into that highway is terrible. I admire colleagues coming from uh, the, the oil districts. They got oil roads. For us, the coffee farmers have never got any coffee roads. Despite supporting this country for generations, we have never received the coffee roads. If you go into the hinterland feeding that international highway, it's terrible. The roads going into the constituents of my sister, Namaju Sise, some of the biggest coffee growers into the country for generations. They're terrible. They rode from Masaka to um, Chiwangala, Ndagwe, over 60 kilometers. The beauty is that the general knows so well about that road. And the road is going to Bukoma and Simbi, the biggest producer of coffee. They're terrible road, that one speaker. I hope the Honourable Minister will. Oh, uh, at least for us, the milk road is hard. <laughs> <laughs> no information. No. We have the milk roads. Information. Yes. Uh, right. Uh, Look. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Right on about Lop. Lop, you are you are mentioning. Are uh, you thanking me, uh, Madam? Thank, thank you, right on about speaker. Uh, right on about speaker. I have heard the Lop talking about no coffee road for generation. But one thing you don't know is that cotton has been the first crop registered. It is an international crop and we have grown this crop, have been educated on the basis of that crop. And even now we are struggling to get the Ministry of, of, of uh, Roads to extend some roads there. Right on our speaker, let it be on record. The, the Minister of, of uh, Transport assured the people of the North that there will be security shortcut that will connect the North with the South through a model swamp. It is now 10 years since. Nothing has been seen. And you know, right, Honorable Speaker, the highway that connects the North with the East has remained miserable. Apart from that, that spot between Dokolo and Soroti. That's the only thing we can be proud of because they, you wanted to make me feel good. But then the whole, the entire nose is in a bad shape. So right honorable speaker, it is important that uh, the Minister of Transport should know Kofi goes through Lira Kamdini, Kofi goes through Soroti, Kofi goes through the highway. We need cotton rod. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Finally. Honorable speaker. members. Maybe just an announcement. Uh, we'll be having Christmas carols uh, presided by His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Stephen Samuel Kazimba on 20th. And they'll be here. And in the conference hall, the letter has been written by my Reverend Canon Kristen Shimana, Shimanya. Honorable members, uh, can I conclude? Coffee, I've had it. No, I'm concluding as a speaker. Okay. Uh, because um, 
I was actually thanking the Honorable Minister for Works for this uh, network. Finally, the Nyendovida Maria Road connects to a monument, a casket of monuments uh, of historical, historical nature of the Catholic faith. So it was also really most deserving. So I hope like the committee has observed, because these are in the city and the closer environments, lighting them would be most appropriate, right on the speaker. So I want to agree with the committee for those uh, observations. I thank you. Thank you, honorable members. As we go for Christmas, one we the cattle keepers. So many people are going to start stealing. So a lot of theft. And then uh, we've heard about anthrax in the districts of Kazo, Zimbabwe, Chotera. So we should be able to protect our cows, not to be contaminated. And also because of the weather. The weather, it is rainy, a lot of malaria. So we should take note. Honorable members, I now put a question that the motion for resolution of parliament to authorize. By the way, I don't need a motion. The debate has been done. Honorable members, I now put a question that the motion for a resolution of parliament to authorize government to prefinance a reconstruction of Masaka Mutukula Road, 89.5 kilometers, and rehabilitation of Nyendo Villa, Villa Maria Road, 11 kilometers. Upgrading of 3.5 kilometers access road to the Uganda People's Defense Force barracks in Masaka. 3.5 kilometers access road to Masaka Industrial Park. An additional scope of 28.5 kilometers for Chikagati Kafunso Road at a total cost of 691 billion 680 million be approved by this house those in favor say on the control and the, the eyes have it honorable members one i want to thank you so so much for all the work you've done as we end the, the year and we go and join our voters to enjoy Christmas, celebrate Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a blessed one. And I want you to take very good care of yourselves. Take very good care of yourselves and may the good Lord always be with you and bless you all. I had John the house and dying. That's Thank you.